thriller in Manila, then the rumble in the jungle. And then Lennox Lewis managed to get himself knocked out by a complete nobody, but never mind. Today on Top Gear GTI, we bring you a titanic tussle between a trio of 10 grand tin top tearaways and it's not even pay-per-view. Now, we've already reached the halfway point and we consider things like interior and exterior styling, user-friendliness, practicality and, of course, good old-fashioned value for money. And, would you believe, the Fiesta is ahead by a nose and what a pretty little nose it is. But, of course, the whole raison d'etre of these pocket rockets is to deliver driving excitement, which is why we've come here to the UK's premier speed venue. No, not Silverstone. You can forget Brands Hatch and don't even think about Donington Park. We come to Kerbera. It's tight, it's twisty. You only need two gears, second and possibly third, but it'll really show what these little cars are made of. First up, the Fiesta. 1.6 litres, 103 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in 10 seconds, and a top speed of 113 miles per hour. Talk about the way that it drives, because it drives absolutely superbly. I'm not a huge fan of front wheel drive cars. I don't actually, I own four cars and none of them are front wheel drive, so that should give you some indication of my thoughts on the subject. But um, I have to say that this Fiesta is huge fun to drive around a twisty little, what is effectively a car track uh, here at Kerbera near Litchfield. Round here, just lift slightly and then back on the throttle again and round here and look at that, you can make a complete arse of it like I just did and still get away with it. The chassis is so neutral, it's so willing to forget and forgive. You can absolutely rev this and there seems to be useful power up, right up to about six and a half thousand RPM. There's actually no red markings on the rev counter at all. Brake brakes, anti-hot brakes. The only car in the uh, the new Fiesta range, the ZTEC S, which actually has traction control and anti-lock brakes. Got to be very quick there. And it may not be as powerful as the others. It may not have the same high spec as the others. Drum brakes on the back. But it's easily the best driver's car here. Second is the Saxo, again a 1.6, but here we have 120 brake horsepower, so 0 to 60 in under 8 seconds, and a top speed of 127 miles per hour. Turns in quite readily there, using up all of the, uh, all of the available track here at Kerber. Just get off, no braking required. Break in here though, and try and get round there. And you've got to be quick at the Saxo, Although lacking the feel that the Fiesta has in the steering department, the steering is just about up to doing the job. I think one of the problems with this car is that Citroen expect you, and indeed many people have paid, it's Britain's best-selling hot hatch, have paid £12,000 for this Saxo VTS, and it shares a lot of its components with rather lesser and significantly cheaper models in the range. Things like the steering wheel, which is horrible plastic, and the, uh, the pedals, the offset pedals, which I find hugely annoying and uncomfortable. They're, they're slightly off to the left in this car. On the brakes, great brakes, lovely brakes. Uh, the VTS, nice, progressive, powerful, trustworthy brakes. And it really is making useful power right up to about just over 6,000 RPM. Although, because it's fun, I'm slamming it <laughs> right into 7,000 RPM. Get on the power here. I'm using every last millimeter of the track. Can I get on the brakes? Will it turn in? Yes, yes. Up the curb here, yes. Yeah, it's getting to be more fun. It was not as immediate as the Fiesta. The Fiesta's a very easy car to learn and to get on here and to drive quickly straight away, perhaps because it's got more power, but it has got a dreadful gear change. Ah! 
Thirdly, the Corsa, 1.8 litres, 125 brake horsepower, 0 to 60 in 8 seconds and a top speed of 130 miles per hour. Vauxhall call this uh, Corsa SRI the flagship of the Corsa range and so they should because it does indeed handle around this tight, twisty, demanding car track like an ocean-going galleon in full sail. It's absolutely dreadful in comparison to uh, the Saxo and certainly to the Fiesta. All over the place, bit of a blancmange, too soft and squidgy, too much body roll, the steering isn't precise enough, the ABS cuts in on the braking far too soon for my liking. It seems to run out of revs even though it's got the beast engine and is the most powerful with 125 brake horsepower of our three cars. If you don't like that gear change, tech to third is a real, you've really got a feel for where third is. Third to second's better. I'm, I'm just having to be far more gentle with all of the controls than I was, especially with the throttle pedal. The gearbox is better than the Citroen, but not as good as the one in the Ford Fiesta. <laughs> loads and loads of body roll, and we're on the grass. Right in front of the big camera, there's no way I can talk my way out of this one. I just don't like this one. Well, it's rubbish here on the track. I'm sure it makes a very nice, pleasant road car. The fact that there's so much give in the soggy suspension. But on the track, I'm starting to feel seasick. <laughs> Sounds good. So, which one's our overall winner? Well, in third place, it would have to be the Vauxhall Corsa SRI. Vauxhall say it feels like a bigger car, and that, I think, is most of the problem. In this company, it's slow, unresponsive, and lumbering, even though it's got the most powerful engine. It's got the best-looking interior, but the exterior is very bland. High specification, high price. Third place for the Corsa. In second place, it's the Citroen Saxo VTS. Fantastic 16-valve engine, iffy gear change, probably the quickest round our course here, but the insurance group is stratospherically high and those limited edition alloy wheels look like hubcaps. <laughs> First place, though, must go to the Fiesta. It's a great-looking little car, both on the inside with Easily the best seats and instrument layout, and on the outside, I really like this deep imperial blue paint job and these gorgeous alloy wheels. But it's also the best driving car around the turns and twists of Kerbera, and that's due to the combination of its free revving and great sounding Z Tech engine, and by far the best gearbox here. As well as being the least powerful car, the Fiesta is also quite significantly the cheapest of our trio, which will come in awfully handy when you have to pay for. Uh, tyres and uh, brake pads. <laughs>